Welcome to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Malone. I'm joined by John Corris, the president and CEO of Tampa General Hospital, who joins us today to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and the business community's response to it. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel to watch more insights like this. John, some really exciting news. You have just been uh, nominated to the uh, Governor DeSantis' Economic Task Force to, uh, for the committee to start looking at reopening the state of Florida. Talk to me about that committee and what you're hoping to accomplish in the next coming weeks. Well, thank you. And thanks uh, for interviewing me. It's great to be with you today. Um, yeah, I'm very honored to be on the committee uh, and to have been selected by the governor. The committee's focus is exactly what you said. It's to look at reopening Florida's economy. I will tell you that the governor has shown real leadership as it relates to being very thoughtful, very pragmatic, and very data-driven about the decisions that he is making. And so the purpose of our committee and the focus of the committee is not only to, to open up the economy again, but how do you do it in a thoughtful way? <clears throat> how do you do it in a staged way that will, will make sure that we safeguard the safety, health, and wellness of our community, but at the same time, we start getting the economy going again. Because the, what's happening today and the way we're approaching this is important, but it's not sustainable um, from an economic perspective. And we have to balance dealing with the virus. We have to balance confronting the public health issues we have with a thoughtful reopening of our, of our economy. And that is what the committee is tasked to do over the next week. We were talking prior to recording that uh, the surge that we have been expecting in Florida might not be as profound as maybe the national media has anticipated us to experience. Tell me a little bit more about the hospital's experience and the models that you're considering to best navigate where the, the um, uh, COVID-19 patients uh, might continue to progress. You're absolutely right. We have not seen the surge that a lot of the national media outlets have predicted for Florida. Now, don't get me wrong. We have lots of COVID-19 positive patients. We have a significant number of patients in hospital beds. We have lots of patients on ventilators but the health system across the state of Florida is handling all of that volume in a, in very well. They are doing a great job. South Florida, where you're headquartered, is a great example of that. You have Jackson, you have Memorial Health System, you have Mount Sinai, North Miami Beach, uh, you have Broward Health, all collaborating, all innovating together, all sharing resources, and you have the, you're the hardest hit in the state of Florida. If you take Miami-Dade, if you take Broward and Palm Beach, you, you're really the hardest hit out of the, in the entire state. Those hospitals are collaborating and they're innovating together. They're sharing resources. There's plenty of ICU beds at the moment. There are plenty of regular hospital beds at the moment. And they're handling the influx of cases very effectively. We're doing the same thing up in Tampa. Baycare Health System, HCA, Advent Health, TGH, we are all collaborating, we're all innovating together. <clears throat> we're sharing resources. One of the things that I'm most proud about is what we've committed to as, as the four major health systems in the Tampa Bay region, is that if any one hospital or health system gets a disproportionate share of patients, and starts to get overwhelmed by patients. Other health systems and hospitals will pick up where we need to and will move patients to other facilities. And the idea behind that is, is we wanna safeguard the, the safety, the health and wellness of our community. And the only way to do that, in my opinion, is to collaborate and innovate together. So we're, we're doing it in Tampa, they're doing it in South Florida. I know there's innovations happening in other places around the state. So that's how we're handling the COVID crisis at the moment. 
a lot of the, the community is getting very anxious to get back to work um, and uh, uh, get out of the house. We just saw Jacksonville Beach open uh, this past weekend and people came out in droves. As we consider uh, the reopening of the economy and the reopening of businesses, uh, from the healthcare provider uh, perspective, how can the community best assist uh, so that we don't see a reoccurrence of COVID and more people get sick um, as we continue to get more and more out of the house? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, well, first of all, the way I think personally, I'm giving you my perspective, the way I think we need to open up this economy is we need to do it in phases. And we need to do it thoughtfully and responsibly. And that's exactly what the governor of our state is thinking about right now. The public's part in all of this is they need to follow the rules. That, that's critically important. So for example, when the government, whether it's a town or a city or the state, says social distancing is important, stay six feet apart at a minimum, people need to stay six feet apart at a minimum. The public does their part by staying close to home, not traveling if they don't need to, only traveling for essential services at the moment and following the rules. So as the, as the economy starts to open back up and we start to do this in a phased approach, the public needs to follow the rules. And that sounds easy, but it's harder to do. It really is, because I've seen it myself. I'll give you an example at Tampa General Hospital. We have a requirement that every single person wears a mask. We give, when you start your shift and you come into Tampa General Hospital, you are given a mask for the day. At the end of your shift, you throw it away. But, I'm, but it's in the interest of completely being transparent, I'd say about 90% of our team is doing really well with that. And there's probably 10% that are struggling with it. And so not only do you have to follow the rules, but you have to be comfortable to hold other people accountable for the health and wellness of the community. So when I see somebody who's not wearing the, a mask appropriately, I stop them, I explain why it's important to wear the mask, and I explain how to wear the mask if necessary. And that accountability, holding people accountable is critically in, important. And so when you look at it uh, across the state, we need people to follow the rules and we need people to gently hold each other accountable as it relates to following those rules. Absolutely. And if the community wants to find more information, where would you direct them? I would direct them to the Tampa General Hospital website. I, you go on to Facebook, you can go on to Twitter, you can go on to Instagram and type in Tampa General and we have a ton of information for the public. Fabulous. Well, thank you once again. That was John Corris, the president and CEO of Tampa General Hospital. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to hear more insights. Again, my name is Abby Maloney, and you've been watching Invest Insights. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Abby. That was great. Appreciate it.